I'll be honest, woke up late. volumes right okay hopefully that's not too ridiculously loud. Okay. Now where the heck were we? Okay, so that, um, that shaman lady gives a whole bunch of money to recruit a crew, but before we do that, we agreed to go help Coyote, um, uh, find her, her bro. BTL clock. The orc looks twitchy, his eyes rolling in his head. He scans the three of you, looks past to see if there are others, licks his lips, and nods throughout, as if going through some internal checklist. Hoi hoi, how you doing? Good day for a trip, ain't it? Shane's head whispers in your ear. This guy's a clocker, trades work time for chips. Part salesman, part lookout. Probably has a signal device for the guys inside. You wanna go on a ride? Hmm. What kind of rides? We got it all. All of it. We got it all. Yeah. What you wanna do? You wanna do some crime? You wanna be bad? We can hook you up. Don't roll that way? Wanna be a hero? Be a hero. We got a fairy tale Drek. We got fairy tale Drek Chummers love. You name it, and you can slag and frag to your heart's content. That's the real thing, right? Slagging and fragging. Don't matter what the trip, as long as there's slagging involved, right? <laughs> you do snuff times. You do snuff too, don't you? Maybe, yeah, maybe, for the right price. You can feel it. What it's like to die. What it's like to kill. Just let me in. I'll see you around after this. Probably see you lots. Sweet. Oh crap, my stream information is still set to... Let's fix this, fix this up real quick.
concerned woman and Charlie. Okay. The woman's probably in her 30s, but hard times have aged her. She looks at you with concern. Don't do it, friends. Don't slot that dreck they're selling. BTLs are killers. Theirs, most of all. We're looking for a kid named Gino. Who doesn't? He's here all the time. Gino's a clocker. Trades his time for chips. Like their little errand boy. I saw him go in there this morning hasn't come out, so I imagine he's writing a dream chip. Oh, uh, sorry, did you have a pass card to get in there? No, but Jamal has. My son's card. Took it off his... Took it off him when his brain fried. Jamal's down the hall. Don't know if he'll give it up, but that's between you and him. kind of guards they have around here. They're serious. This place is backed by the Yakuza. Japanese Mafia, oh man. Yes, in case in case you were too dumb to know what Yakuza are. Gotta gotta spell it out. Japanese Mafia. <laughs> How many and what kind of firepower? There's a guy on the door, Charlie, who sells the passes to get in. He's not tough blind in one eye. There's another five or so wandering around. Two of them are bad news, covered in magic symbols. Mean. Five or six? That's not so bad. We have surprise on our side. Yeah, let's see. Oh, Charlie! Oh, wait, wait, wait. So there's Jamal. Let's investigate Jamal's apartment, if that's what this is. Nothing. Jamal has the look of a longtime chiphead, emaciated, hollow eyed, but hungry and desperate. Uh, what you looking at, Spike here? I want to buy your pass card. How do you know I have a pass card? People hear things. Well, you heard right. I sell them at a discount. Charlie charges 50 new yen for them, but I can get you three for a hundred. Hmm. That's thing 75. And I was thinking slot off. Hmm. That's just bad. Charlie's an orc with an expression of boredom and one milky eye. He drones through his standard pattern. Need a pass? 50 new yen each. 150 for the lot of ya. That'll let you come and go as you please. You can chip in there and we'll keep you safe while you ride. BTL chips are separate costs. Last about three hours. Prices vary. Buy those inside. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So I could punch him in his eye. Just show him that we already have passes. Charisma. Well, we have our passes, so let's just. Great. Have fun. Sweet. I don't know how long we'll build this without combat, though. We might just be setting ourselves up to have, like an epic fight, um, out of this place. Uh, 
big room. The entire floor of this tenement building has been given over to a chaos of technology and squalor. Across the room, a chromed out decker argues loudly with an armed thug, abruptly falling silent as they turn towards you. The shotgun wielding thug squeaks in panic. It's the crew that took out Stevie J's place! I told you it was only a matter of time! The man with the cyber deck calmly speaks with a heavy, digitized voice. You mess with the wrong BTL lab, Aho. This is a Yakuza operation. With the push of a button, I can make these tweakers into my own personal killer puppets. You fragged and slagged. Baconator, don't attack any of the chip heads. They don't know what they're doing, and you could hurt Gino. I'll do my best. Uh, I have a concussion grenade, better than fragging the tweakers if they get caught in the middle. Sure. Let's see. Chiphead man, chiphead woman, chiphead dwarf. Uh, so we want to take out the decker, I'm assuming, pretty quick. Hide over here, Baconator. No, what? Okay, shaman is bad news. Bodyguard. I guess I have to deal with this lady. That is horrible, Paco. Accidentally shoot Paco, so let's just pistol. I'm 
taking some big hits here. Did he just kill me? What just happened? Oh no! Say it before we get to that room next time. Yeah, geez, everyone just focus fired on me. Let's uh, speed through these interactions here. Try to charisma this guy. I want you to take. I want to take a look around first. If your selection's good, we'll give you 200 yen on our way out. Sweet. Take that, Jamal. Fuck out, never use that bat.
Oh, they're in like perfect shotgun grouping right there. My domain now. Or am I? How many AP do I have? Run up 
too. Take her out. How dare you hurt my little buddy? How do I leave this place? isn't uh, active anymore, and it's about to die. That's not good. Gino, Gino! <sighs> you eject the BTL Gino's been riding. He gasps suddenly and his eyes flutter open. He looks confused, worse than the other chip heads you've seen. His lips are white and chapped, his eyes sunk into his head. There's vomit on his shirt and sweat on his forehead. When he speaks, his words are slurred. He's burnt. What? What the hell? Who slotted me out? Who fragging slotted me out? Gino, it's me. It's Carla. Slot me back in, goddammit. This is bullshit. I don't want to be here anymore. Slap me back in. He looks around the room angrily. His hand reaches for his implant. Coyote grabs his wrist, stops him. Gino, no. Coyote, be careful. Gino wrenches his wrist from Coyote's grasp and he staggers back, reaches under his shirt and pulls out a gun. Coyote watches him, horrified, with tears in her eyes. Gino waves it around, blinking wildly. Back off, just back the hell off. Take it easy, Gino, we're backing off. He presses his hands to his side to the sides of his head, his fingers still on the trigger, squints. What the hell's wrong with you people? We're trying to help you. This is the way you help me? Look at this place. Look at me. He looks around at the squalor of the room, then glimpses his own reflection in the machinery. Oh god, look at me! Um. Those chips aren't reality, Gino. Come with us. It's real to me. I can smell it, touch it, I can frag and taste it. I was a god in there. King! I was a king! Can you imagine it? No. No, 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 no. Coyote shouts something, but it's too late. Gino jams the gun into his data jack and pulls the trigger. There's a pop, barely a gunshot, and he's gone. I'm sorry, Carla. I'm so, so sorry. Coyote looks at you, tears in her eyes. I'm not stopping. Not now, not ever. She looks at Paco, then back to you. A real rain is coming to Seattle, and it's gonna wash the scum off the streets. I'm going to burn every mother fra frag in BTL shop in the sprawl until they're gone. I'm Batman. 
every mother fragging one. Whew. Looking for trouble. Shannon's plan is the best lead you've got to find out more about the Ripper, but getting back into the warehouse is going to require some support in case the dreck hits the fan. The seamstress's union will have exactly what you need, a fixer. Finding this necessary middleman and deal broker is key to most plans involving shadow runners. A good fixer is worth the nuyen. It's their job to have the contacts and know who's good at what. They'll put together the team you need. Magical support, skilled street samurai for muscle, or a Nova Hot Decker for matrix work. Running the shadows is a life and death gamble. It pays to hire the best shadow runners you can. Right there. There's Van Grass, John Bartlett. Cherry Bomb flags you as you walk through the door. Hey there, Baconator. There's a woman looking for you. Jessica something. She's waiting for you by the stage. Bellevue type. Wouldn't order anything. Won't touch anything. I think she's afraid of diseases or something. Thanks, Cherry. No charge, Chummer. Uh, who's around? I just got in, but I think Coyote's cleaning the back bar. Mr. Delilah is hanging out in his usual place. The vendors downstairs came in a few minutes after me. Owen, oh, Bartlett's here. Don't think you've ever met him yet. Who's Bartlett? John Bartlett. Big presence at the end of the bar. He's in the biz, connected. You might want to meet him. Okay, I'm gonna look around and have fun. Um, we'll talk to Jessica, but... But give me a sec. Mr. Delilah. Let me see how Coyote is doing. Coyote's wiping down the back bar. She doesn't stop when you approach. Keeps her eyes on her work. Hey, you okay? Yeah, fine. Listen, Baconator. I don't want to talk about what happened with Gino, okay? But stun's done. Gino's dead, I'm alive. And that's all there is to it. It's the Barons, right? Nothing more to do or say. I'm gonna be looking for work. Your kind of work. So the sun comes up, keep me in mind. Okay, I gotta do this now. The afternoon checklist isn't gonna finish itself. Okay, Jessica. At a glance, you can tell that Sam's sister, Jessica, is from a different world, the opposite of Sam in almost every way. Her suit is tailored, her eyes are sharp, and her style exudes authority. Miss Watts? Jessica Watts? She eyes you up and down warily. She does a good job of hiding it, but it's clear that she's well outside her comfort zone. Oh. One sec. Yes, and you are? My friends call me Baconator, and I counted Sam among them. That's funny. I didn't think Sam had any friends. Quality over quantity, I suppose. I'm sorry, it's just that it doesn't match with the picture of Sam I've had in my head all these years. So you're one of them. The one I was called about? A woman who called herself Coyote contacted me this morning to inform me that my brother was dead and that I should come to this place and speak to someone about an investigation. That's right, I'm hoping you can help me get to the bottom of this. 
I don't know what use I'll be. Just answer a few questions, is all. Alright, but... You're not with the police, are you? I'm getting that a lot lately, but no. By the look on her face, she's clearly struggling with this. I'll be honest, I would just as soon put this all behind me, and the fastest way to do that is through the proper channels. Surely there's an official police investigation going on. Why not let the professionals handle this? I am a professional. But you must have better things to do than waste your time searching for whoever killed my lowlife brother. First, Sam was my friend, and second, I'm being paid for my trouble. Someone's paying you? I find it hard to believe that anyone who really knew Sam would put up the money. Who is it? Actually, Sam hired me himself. I don't understand. Let's name drop the campaign. It's called a dead man switch. It's triggered. Uh, it triggered when he died. Am I to believe my drunken sot of a brother hired you to find the person who killed him after he died? Her boardroom mask drops momentarily, and in a sigh she reveals a brief glimpse of real emotion. I left Seattle to get away from Sam and his bullshit. Now I'm back, he's dead, and I still have to deal with him. <sighs> Listen to me, Baconator. You seem like a decent person, but I'm trying to move on with my life. Our mother killed herself last year, and Sam... Well, Sam was Sam. You know. I've worked so hard to put my family issues behind me. I don't want to see this drag on. Uh, I'd love nothing more than give you closure and quickly. I appreciate that, but, but I think I'd prefer to just let it be. No one else needs to get hurt. Your brother had my back when I needed him. I can't walk away from this. Are we talking about the same man? My brother was worthless, Baconator. Worthless. He used people. He... <sighs> Never mind. I can see that you're not going to let this go, and I respect that you're honoring my brother's memory in your own way. But I hope you can understand how emotional this is for me. Maybe you can do things in a way the police can't, and maybe I can help. What do you need from me? When's the last time you saw or spoke to Sam? It's been ages. I can't even remember. There was a note on Sam's body. It sounded like an apology. An offer to meet up and bury the hatchet. It was signed Jessica. I wrote many such notes in the beginning, but I haven't made such an effort in a long time now. I don't know why he would have kept it. guys close. I think I've made my feelings about Sam pretty clear, don't ya? You know, it sounds sad that he's gone. Uh, I mourned losing Sam long before he died. Yeah, show her the picture. Justa takes the photo from you guardedly, as if it might sting her, but that guard drops the moment she looks at it. Where, where did you find this? In Sam's bunk. I, I can't believe he kept this. That's one of the few possessions he had. What happened between the two of you? Things, things were different back then. We were different. We were a family. Then, after our father died, things began to change, and we couldn't get back to a new normal. With our dad around, there was always a reassuring order to our lives. But after, everything got mixed up. 
You can never really appreciate the importance of a person in your life until they're gone. The remorse plays wet across her eyes, and it seems that she's not just talking about her father. Jessica then steals herself to tell the rest. Sam tried to be the man of the house. He truly did, but he couldn't handle it, and pretty soon he had spent every dime of our father's life insurance. Every dime. After that was all gone, with Mom working two, three jobs, he spent all her money, too. I couldn't stand the way he abused her trust, so finally I just had to leave. She holds the photo forward, one part of her ready to relinquish it along with the past, and another looking to hold on to both. May I keep this? Sure, I got what I needed from it. Thank you. Uh, tell me about your mother and her death. She was a devout Catholic. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that she sacrificed her life for Sam and me. But she turned a blind eye to what Sam was becoming, refused to acknowledge his downward slide. I couldn't watch her do it anymore, so I moved out. After I left, we drifted farther and farther apart. I wasn't here when she died. In fact, I didn't even know about it until I returned to Seattle five months ago. Where were you before you moved back here? Cal Free. What brought you down there? It was less of what brought me there than what made me leave there. I felt lost in Seattle, so I moved to California to see if I could find myself. And did you? Actually, yes. While I was there, I developed a whole new outlook on life, a vision for what the world could become, and I came back here to help make it happen. Where were you on the night of Sam's murder? That, uh, that always sounds like a little bit accusatory, but let's go with it. I will overlook the implied accusation and tell you what I was, and tell you that I was at a fundraiser all evening, a very crowded fundraiser. Did Sam have any enemies? Sam's biggest enemy was Sam. I don't know any of any others. You would likely know better than me these days. Alright, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you, Miss Watts. Just as well, I needed to get back to the office. But before I go, you should know that I'm reinterring my mother's body tomorrow, and I'm arranging to have Sam buried with her. The funeral's tomorrow at Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament, 7 o'clock. You're more than welcome to attend. Uh, wouldn't miss it. Goodbye, Baconator. I hope you find what you're looking for. Stay safe. Alrighty, so that was not very helpful. Let's talk to Johnny here, John Bartlett. Okay. Full of life with a quick smile, the man tilts his head and watches you approach. Hey, guy, what's shaking? A little of this, a little of that. I hear that, oh my. I might have something for you if you got the new yin. Time is money. I'm listening. You ever hear of the Nephilim Network? Of course you have. An in-the-know guy like you has to have heard of the, of the premier Merc team out there. If you say so. We're a tight unit. Cost a bit more than the common rabble, but we're worth it. Okay, so... I'm very busy. You show me something worth my time, or you walk away. Oh, I have data from the NTSB? Sure, I guess I have data from the NTSB. Renraku would pay to keep it quiet, and Ares would pay to know what it is. I've got 800 new yen for something like that. I know you'll double dip on this one. Make it a thousand. 
As long as you keep bringing stuff like this. Sure. Okay, I guess Mr. Delilah's what we're doing. Oh, we could go shopping, I guess. We'll go shopping after we talk to a fixer. If you're talking to me, there's business to transact, am I right? Um, yes, Mr. Delilah. I have a need I think you can fill. Of course you do. That's why you came back. Street talk is that you're tracking the Ripper. What can I do for you, Ripper Tracker? I need to put a crew together. You got scratch or you planning to pay me out of your earnings? I think, I, yeah, I can pay them up front. Excellent, we agree on terms. I've got some runners on call if you have any special requests. Oh, um, does this mean we won't be able to buy stuff? I have some stuff to take care of first. I want another med kit. Or no, I want to at least take something out of my stash. I have a med kit in my stash. Stuff. Maybe the cyber dude. No. Dr. Castle glances up only briefly from her charts. Her impish friend, on the other hand, tracks your every move like some sort of humanoid raptor with a mouse under its shadow. Love to see another day, have you? Uh, just a pit stop, Doc. Night's not over yet. Oh, oops. I didn't mean skip that. Granted, a repeat customer means a person courting death more often than any good doctor should condone. I don't suppose I can dissuade you from your course of action. Uh, if only life was so simple. Very well, then let's talk about how I can help ensure you make it back alive once more. Let me see your medical supplies. Nope. Who do I buy robot repair kits? Aha! Uh -huh. Cool. now. I can have that runner crew on site as soon as I have the new yin. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, okay. Uh, can I not, um... A coyote? Wait, I wanna talk to Coyote. I can't. 
Okay. Just in case. <laughs> Maybe a mage would be good. Expensive ones seem to be the riggers. Let's bring an adept. And I swear I have a shaman. So we'll bring a dwarven adept. Shaman, so I'm not gonna bring the shaman. We could bring a samurai or a mage. Look at this guy, is Halen Mar? I think maybe we do need a samurai, but I don't like either of them, so we'll bring the mage. This might be a horrible choice, but let's see. She has an axe, and my axe! He has a pistol and a power bolt. He just has a pistol. What was this? Haste. And mana bolts. Oh no. Get back. Back. Oh, okay. So Gallo Glass here is a Healy person. Or this guy's just straight up damage. How's that other adept compared to, to this one? Oh, this one at least has a gun. Magic resistance, that's helpful. Okay, yeah, we'll keep her. Oh, I'm really tempted to bring this guy because he can heal. Oh, shit, go again. Yeah, we'll bring Gallo Glass, even though Halen certainly looks more impressive. So he can do a lot of buffing. I don't really need these buffs though. I guess he could buff the adept. Huh. 
somehow. We'll we'll see. Yeah. He returned to the docks to meet Shannon Half Sky. Although the Ripper's latest victim was her brother. Although the Ripper's latest victim was her brother, but Shannon appears cool and professional. A consummate runner by birth, if not by trade. She'll get the job done, and hopefully one of the hearth spirits in this place can point you towards the Ripper. Dealing with spirits can be tricky business, but when they deliver, it's pure platinum. One doesn't have to be an Amerindian shaman to summon and control spirits. Anyone with magic talent can do it. But Shannon seems to have a particular connection to the spirit world. As you approach the gate, you know something's not right. The docks, already strange and uncomfortable at night, trigger the need for caution. Then you see it. The guards are missing and the gate's been smashed in. Uh, cool beans. Let's get out of here. You have karma available. Yes, I forgot. That's a lot of karma. Time he showed up. Looks like we weren't the only ones who want to take advantage of the situation. A bunch of mercs have locked down the area. I don't think they're here for us, though. My guess is there's something worth a bit of coin left in that warehouse. Any chance we can sneak past? Probably not. They've been doing regular patrols around the perimeter, and the front door looks like it's locked. This block's off limits. There's a. We've got a gas leak on the docks here. No loitering. This guy doesn't look like one of the hired mercenaries. Hey, are you even listening? Get out of here! Really, guy? They aren't paying you enough. Especially not once Lone Star sends a response team. Frag, I knew she was lying. Told me they jammed all the Lone Star channels. Damn it, I'm out.
Whoa, what is that thing? Haste would be incredibly useful. Um, let's buff ourselves. Does killing hands not work when we're holding an axe? Why are we using the axe? something I think just yet. Oh, I need to unequip this stupid asset. Yeah. Why was I just gonna hurt? As soon as the last Merc hits the ground, the docks become eerily silent. It's like the key to the warehouse. Ah, so do I need to heal? This guy? Oh, no. Oh, everyone's a full health, okay.
confirm. You head inside the darkened warehouse with Shannon. Her eyes have that far-off gaze associated with looking into the astral plane. When the world changed, the Native American tribes made a resurgence as well, demanding a place in the new world. They got it. The salute the council now represents 8.6 million Amerindians across a multitude of tribes, Salish, Macaw, Sinsirak, and others. They've adapted to the awakening better than other nations, thanks to a deeper connection to the world, both physical and spiritual, and stereotypically. You can see that connection alive in Shannon now. You notice the shift in her focus as she returns to the present. She nods to you. You can sense the spirits in this place. Now you just need to find them. Find that data or we're dead meat. So there's an adept, two shadow runners. Potentially more. Really? 74% from right here? Get there. some sort of cover, I guess. Okay, so this is their full team now. What? Oh no, there's stuff in other rooms? Focus down the injured one. Uh, summon. Put it with those. Holy crap. I'm 
might need to heal that up. thing I summoned. Okay, I didn't understand what that was. Uh, I don't think it's a shaman thing. I'm sure give me two APs. No! Well, that sucks. There's no one in there.
Oh, okay, there it is. Is it just one dude? Too bad though. <laughs> oh, fuck with the grenades. Are we can break my robot. after I loot this guy. summon the spirit. The air grows cold and the spirits of dead children coalesce from the vapor of your breath. Their cherubic faces are burned and their lips quiver as if they are about to cry. But their eyes are round and vacant and they glare at you now, unblinking. We are the innocents who have perished in the flames, choking on smoke as we fell from the sky, crying for our mothers. You bring anchors to our world, which was once home to us, and we will use them to testify. 
We no longer see the world of flesh, Seeker. Only the essence and auras and of living things. Words, though. Words may echo through the veil, and sometimes, sometimes we may hear them. Last night this place was filled with a scream that went on and on, drawing us to it. It was a man crying out for a witness as he died, and so we came to bear witness but fled in terror before the malevolent spirit that profaned that man's remains. This spirit was other. It was not of this place. It had twisted its way through the veil and through the dark to come here. When the other had gone and we returned to our vigil, we found two creatures of flesh. One you would call an elf, unsullied by technology and able to channel the energies of the cosmos. Yet his spirit was corrupted from within. He was dark and twisted, yet not like the other, so we did not flee. The second we knew to be a troll. Ribbons of his essence had been flayed from him, leaving cold machinery behind. His aura was the aura of one simple and confused. Between elf and troll lay the remains of the man whose sister now chants to us for justice. The elf, his essence, remains in this place where the man died. Something has been left behind, a small part of him perhaps. Through us, you shall bear witness and hear the words of the elf and troll. Prepare yourself. Your stomach lurches as a spirit passes into you, a heavy presence settling somewhere deep within your soul. You simultaneously feel the drive like driver and passenger. As time folds in on itself and you experience the moment after the murder that took place here the night before. You don't so much as see the elf and the troll as feel them. You idiot, there's no need to anesthetize him. He's already dead. Sorry, doctor, I usually put them out before you go to work on them at the hospital. Did this one volunteer too? <laughs> yes, they all volunteer. Just like I volunteered for this little bit of butchery. Our presence grows weary. One of the spirits stares at the object for a long, long time. It lets out a sigh of relief as if reunited with a loved one after a long absence. It closes its eyes. Its face, once a mask of pain and despair, appears hopeful. May I depart, spirit seeker? I wish to rest. I have long awaited for... rest. Uh, yeah, go rest. With the spirits gone, the young shaman releases her hold on the magical tether, connecting her to the other realm. She reels from the backlash, or perhaps from the emotional toll of knowing her brother's last moments. They saw him. They were with him when he died. You alright? She takes a series of controlled breaths, only shuddering with the first few. No, but I will be. I... I don't want that for him. Not what those poor souls have endured. My brother deserves to be free. He will be, once we find his killer. Yes, the elf and the troll. We have to find that piece of the elf the spirit spoke of. It's our best hope of stopping this. There are some squawky birds behind me. What are you guys squawking about? Thank goodness.
for this talkative. So we're looking for a piece of the elf. And it's definitely that, oh, right there. It's definitely that same elf that we saw near that body of the other victim. Blood. Hope this is not Chris's blood. This is what the spirits wanted us to find. The piece of my brother's killer. It's not much, but it's enough. She scowls at it, looking every bit as she intends to reach through the small sample and dismember its owner from afar. And perhaps she can. Uh, can you track him with that? I can, given enough time. But I'm still feeling quite drained. I'll need to rest before I can try anything so involved. When I'm able, I'll commune with Bear, consult the spirits, and do what must be done. But in the meantime, you might take some portion of the sample to pursue a more conventional avenue of attack. Yeah, I've got some friends who might be able to help. Good. Let me know if you learn anything about this elf and troll pair. And should you find them, I want to be there when they're brought low. I want to see the light leave their eyes for my brother. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, let's just skedaddle. When you return to the seamstress's union in the early hours of the morning, it seems a completely different place. Bereft of the normal crowd that haunts it, the bar feels desolate, almost abandoned. It's eerie, like the back hallways of hotels or shopping malls. But you find, but you finally have a break in your case. A sample of the Ripper's blood. You just need to find someone who can help you analyze it. Well, I guess we're going back to Seamstress here and we'll talk to the doc down below, but I figured that we were going to go talk to Dresden. Look at this wicked looking janitor. Man, I want to be a cool janitor. Nerps. Gathered around the intimate back bar, Mrs. Kubota and her coterie gather for breakfast, with the lady herself doing the cooking. The smell of soy calf and something resembling sausage fills the room. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. So, okay. Ohio, would you like some? She stops. Forgive me, oh my, but you look like hell. Uh, long night. She looks you over, noting the signs of your nocturnal activities. She nods. Any run you can walk away from is a good run. I agree, could be back in one piece. It is good to have you back. I can tell you've been busy, and I can see by the look on your face that there's something you need. Is this about the Ripper? Uh, maybe. Anyone downstairs? I believe so, yes. I will unlock the piano so you may go downstairs. I hope you get the answers you're looking for. It is likely that you will visit the Matrix before the day is done. May I take a sausage? Mm, take the whole plate, honey. Alrighty. Let's get out of here. Uh, now I should talk to Klua, I guess. Uh, 
I forgot to talk to him last time before we went out. Oh no, Gruberman isn't here. I can't buy another drone repair kit. Morning, you look like you've been up all night. Yeah, you look like you're seeing some action too. Where's Doc Castle? Asleep, I assume. Do you need a med kit or something? I need someone to analyze a DNA sample. Hmm, Doc Castle's equipment isn't really set up for that. However, I could employ a semiconductor chip. It would decode DNA using a voltage change instead of light. That would eliminate the use of highly expensive equipment that would be acquired otherwise. Hmm, I just read a journal about it so the information's still fresh. Frankly, it should be easy. What do you want to know about it? I want to know the owner's identity. Ah, that's beyond me. All I can get you is the gene code sequence. Yeah, but that's where I come in. David, if you can track me that, uh, if you can get me that code sequence, I'm pretty sure we can track its owner down via a matrix run. We'll do. Let me have the DNA you want to test. Sure, 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 sure. Baconator, when David gives me the sequence, I'm gonna jack in and help you trace that blood sample back to its source. Um. Wiz, get to work. A uh, question, if I may, who's. I think it's the Ripper's blood. No Drek? Wake up, Johnny, Johnny boy, you've got work to do. And Baconator, if you need any gear, I'll be right here. Yeah, I just got me a second wind. Me up my rig, Baconator. Uh, so what sort of equipment do you sell, dude? Uh, nothing that I want. I guess I could buy an Esp. I don't know, like, what the differences between, like, Assassin, Attacker, and Exploder all sound like damage. I don't know. Let's buy an Assassin. And a shield, maybe? Oh, this guy can summon the Ares. Flight recorder, right? What's up, to get some peace and quiet tonight? You got something for me? I've got a flight recorder. Wouldn't happen to be an Ares flight recorder, would it? Some very powerful buyers are looking for that right now. I can get rid of it for you for, say, 20%. That leaves 2000 for you. Deal. Pleasure doing business. Sweet. Okay, Johnny. Thanks to that there semiconductor-based gene sequencing system David employed, we should have the information we need to track the Ripper in the Matrix. I'm really impressed with his results, considering it was his first attempt. He was utilizing an unproven technique he'd read about in a science journal, and he was working on it from memory on minimal sleep. Uh, well, sounds fascinating. If there's time later, maybe you can tell me more about it. Yeah, maybe we can sit down with David and he can share his research. But let's just stay focused. 
Here's what I'm thinking. We hit the Lone Star DNA database first to see if our donor has a prior criminal record. If they have extensive DNA archives, then we go hunting based on what we find. Let's hit the decks and jack into the matrix. I can get into their private grid easily, but I've got to warn you, once we're in, it could get a little rough. How much decking experience have you had? Uh, yeah, I know, I know my way around the matrix a little bit. Great, I'll come with you just in case any ice decides to crash our party. Let's go time. Erosion, killer, medic, slow, assassin, execute. The excruciating ecstasy of jacking your neural network into the digital world washes over you, grips you, crushes you into a singularity, and expands you infinitely. You're one with the data stream. Welcome to the Matrix. Oh, okay. I guess control both of them. So what does he have? He has killer, medic, suppression, sniffer. Okay. We're in. So this is the alarm state down here. this menu what is this I don't know. Uh, do we go for the white eyes do any of these. Am I not good enough at decking? Is that it? Um, you know, I might not even need a, a spell thing for this. to us, guys. So 
of 75 hit points left. Okay, I don't have anyone that can do that. Okay, ice is down. DNA match located, 100% match, arrest records database. Subject, Silas Forsberg. Status, deceased. Profession, chop son. Chop shop, surgical assistant. Priors, breaking and entering, two counts. Public indecency, one count. Brought for questioning on accusations of unlicensed plastic surgery. No charges filed. We're sent match to a, a dead man. Let's keep looking. Autopsy records. News net. Johnny can handle himself over here. Okay, we have to lower that uh, alarm. did anything that wasted all of his moves. Great in here. Okay. Uh. Autopsy records. Subject Silas Forsberg. Note subject was found overdosed on half a dozen different sedatives. Several anti anxiety medications were also found in his system face was mutilated, possibly self-inflicted. Identity could not be confirmed immediately due to the disfigurement. Had to check dental records to confirm. No next of kin. Large puncture wounds were found in several places on the body. Possibly large bore surgical needles. Body had been decomposing for several weeks before the landlord noticed the smell and called the police when no one answered the door. Alright, uh, sweet.
I'm going to take either of these out now with just an erosion. Newsnet. Return on subject. Silas Forsberg. The body of Silas Forsberg, a chop shop surgical assistant, was found in an apartment in Snohomish earlier this week. The body had been there for as long as a month when Forsberg's landlord noticed a rancid smell and contacted authorities. Lone Star representatives have issued a statement saying Forsberg's death has been ruled a suicide. According to reports, his body... Uh... His body, a mass of puncture wounds, and the cause of death was determined to be an overdose of anti-stress medications and sedatives. Oh, frick. Um, Alex, can you grab me paper towels, please? Please, please? Um, great. Now my desk gonna be all sticky. Uh, bear with me, I'm just... Jeez. down with Windex later on. Okay, that's just about dry now. Man. Thankfully, this is a hard mouse pad, and so 
not easily prone to damage. It's been a it's been a while since I knocked over soda all over my desk. Okay, everyone's dry again. I'm good. <sighs> the man's employer claims he was a dedicated employee, though he suffered from bouts of depression. Forsberg's next of kin could not be located, but the attorney appointed to his estate uh, has located a will written weeks prior, leaving all of his belongings to his psychiatrist. The identity of the psychiatrist has not been released due to privacy concerns. Yet another sad end to a life, as is far too common here in the sprawl. Now that might be something we can go on. Let's go regroup in meat space for a bit. Disgusting meat space. Oh no, this isn't the right way. I'll go through this arch. I think. Yeah. So, here's what we know. Our DNA evidence belongs to a dead man whose death was never explained. He worked with chop shops, which fits with the living guy that you met. The news net says he left his estate to a psychiatrist. Maybe finding out who the psychiatrist was will give us our next clue. My gut says we can deck into the medical board's records and reverse trace to find this doctor. You in? Ah, uh, sure. Punch it. Yeah, that looks good. Absolutely no point us even bringing the ZSPs, but... Actually, do I have any karma right now? White sparky ice. White ice. Well, sparky ice sounds bad, so... Searching medical records, Silas Forsberg. Medical records fi file for Silas Forsberg located. Give me the old stuff. Pediatric record, partial. One particular pediatrician's entry stands out from the rest. Child suffers from a chronic depression and social anxiety, most likely caused by his physical abnormalities. We have seen many cases like this recently, with the outbreak of changeling children being born. With the aberrant physiology we're seeing, there is no telling what sort of brain functions are affected. Prescribed a series of sedatives last year that seem to have no effect, upping the dosage. 
Oh, yeah, we just read that. Data missing or corrupted? Contact your administrator to help. Ooh. The file is quite large and takes well over an hour to read through. The final entry, however, is the most significant. It's written by Dr. Henry Holmes. Silas has overcome significant mental disorders and no longer goes through periods of violent episodes. Latest medications have proven especially effective, but I believe that being treated by another elf has significantly impacted his treatment. Unfortunately, my efforts to maintain an emotional boundary with him have proven challenging. He is bonded to me in an unhealthy and frankly unnerving way. His hero worship exhibits itself in the form of mimicked speech patterns and adopting my dress. For this reason, and for the health of the patient, I'm assigning another doctor to this case. I will inform him at his next session. Uh, so, not super helpful. Whoa, what is that? Black eyes. We could fry our brains and kill us. Find some cover, throw out some erosion. Uh, you do the same. We won't worry about this little, little dude just yet. Maybe we'll just regular attack. Whew. Okay, it's got 25 health, it will die next turn. Employment records located, Henry Hollings Holmes, MD, PhD. Uh, let's look at previous employers first. Previous employers, private practice, attending psychiatrist, Mercy Mental Hospital in Snohomish, Washington. Psychiatrist in residence, Mercy Mental Hospital in Snohomish. And the current employer? Dr. Henry Holmes currently holds the position of Chief Psychiatrist and Administrator at Mercy Mental Hospital in Snohomish, Washington. Okay. So we need to go to Snohomish. Is that a real um, place in Washington? I don't know. Contextual. And as the meat world comes back into focus, your head once again tries to settle on which world is the real one. While the philosophical question lingers, your meat body demands food and drink. You disconnect from your deck to find that the Union safe house has risen. Uh, Gruberman, I need another robot repair kit. Gimme. Robot. 
Uh, a simple one will do. What else can I get? A med kit on wheels. It's a runner's best friend in the heat of a firefight. We have the money. Let's do it. Stash. There's a cockroach in my eggs. That's the protein boost. All right. Yum. David looks almost as tired as you do. You can tell that this case has gotten under its his skin like it has yours. Any luck in there? Well, we found an exact match for the DNA, but it was linked to a dead chop shop assistant by the name of Silas Forsberg. Now I have my theories, but what do you think's going on here, Baconator? Hmm. Maybe Silas faked this down. Well, that's a distinct possibility. Uh, what was it that we saw in the autopsy report? His face was so mangled that he used dental records. catch. That matches up with something I've seen runners try. It's easy enough to find a body shop that'll make a replica set of teeth for you. Find some schlub off the street no one will miss, swap the teeth, and throw the heat off your trail for a while. But lucky I've never been that desperate. But why would you need to go to those lengths? Did the police records have something linking him to a different crime? Uh, I don't think any of these is the right answer. I think that the answer is that he was insane and obsessed with becoming his psychiatrist, and so, like, swapped lives with the psychiatrist. Uh, sure. Had a prior for unlicensed plastic surgery. True, that wouldn't look too good on someone's record if they wanted to become a doctor. I think this is begun, beginning to come together. The late Silas left all his belongings to a doctor. Dr. Holmes, employment records have him as the administrator at Mercy Mental, and the picture on his file matches the person you saw downtown. The same person this DNA belongs to. All the evidence points to him being your killer, whoever he really is. I should go find this Dr. Holmes and ask him some very pointed questions. Please pay him my respects. I always find that high caliber rounds get the message across. You should clearly hire some friends and go loaded for bear. I sideloaded a ton of valuable data from those Lone Star Matrix nodes. Here's your cut. See you later. Talk to the good doctor. Oh, no, let's swap out of some inventory first. Still sleeping in there. Why can't I swap this? Okay.
Yeah, we'll try that. I have two buddies. Just one glance is all you need to tell. The good doctor's exhausted. Her crumpled scrubs are stained with a mixture of blood and other fluids too colorful to be naturally occurring in the human body. Her eyes are those of a person who's built up a substantial sleep debt and has no idea when or how to begin paying it off. I'm not one to talk, but you look like Drek. Afraid there isn't much I can do for that. Doc Castle snaps her fingers and calls forth the spirit normally seen perched on her shoulder. It appears from out of the ether, and the doctor immediately seems less fatigued than she was a moment before. Now what can I do for you? Are we all right here, Doc? Here at the Union? Yeah, it's fine. Just getting back to myself. Or, I'm just getting back myself. Days here tend to be slow, so I volunteer at a medical center on the other side of Touristville. And I had a rough shift. Uh, I imagine most shifts in the Barrens are rough ones. By any measure, yes, they are. But today was especially difficult. I didn't hear all the details. All I really know is what came in on the lips of the victims healthy enough to still speak. Apparently, one of the Baron's gangs incurred the wrath of the local... Soul Bar Rings, leading to a rolling shootout through the city streets. Several bystanders were injured. But the real mess didn't begin until the party crashed into the yard of an old industrial plant out on Union Hill Road. They woke some sort of toxic spirit, which then began running amok, causing easily as much damage as the initial battle. And we were left to pick up the pieces, of course. But enough about my troubles. Let's hear about yours. Tell me, what ails you? I want to look at your cyberware. Actually, let's uh, see if we can talk to Coyote. Oh, I can't leave. Okay. Let's just hire some runners then. If you're looking for runners again, I'm your guy. Discreet service only. Okay. Okay, Shannon is in here. Is Coyote in here? No. Okay. Well, I guess uh, it's free, so I'll take her. Oh, she's more powerful now. She's slow.
Oh, this guy looks pretty rad. Let's take her. I enjoyed using her. We don't need Galaglass. Let's get Ray Quandary. Burn that maze. Stick with fixer contacts instead. I could take this troll dude instead of the assassin. But... So that points us at 50, 60, and the troll has a med kit. Let's not take this ass. What about this guy? Cybered Warrior. He could take another Rigger. Another Adept. I don't know. Um, This guy's hat. Yeah, we'll take the troll. Whew. That was a good lineup. An elf, a human, a dwarf, and a troll. Let's take it. met our diversity quotas. The blood you found at the warehouse belongs to a man masquerading as one Dr. Holmes, and you've tracked him to Mercy Mental Hospital, located in the notoriously anti-metahuman farmlands of Snohomish. The drive to the hospital is long and unpleasant. Finally, you reach the walled and gated hospital compound. Despite the pretense of security, the gate is unguarded, unlocked, and open. No one stops or greets you as you drive up to the large, crumbling building. Gothic ramparts top a damaged roof, cracked walls, and broken windows. All around the building is a lawn gone wild. Only the artificial light from within speaks of inhabitants. You walk up to the hospital steps to confront Sam Watts' killer and bring an end to the Emerald City Ripper. Yeah, I guess this is a good setup. I should have brought another drone repair kit, though. Especially since one of the drones is a medkit drone. I didn't really need to bring two medkits. I screwed up a little bit. That's fine. You have karma available. Yeah, let's use it. Oh, this is why we can't use asps. Oh, 
let's see. Uh, I would like a new etiquette. if we'll have to actually run anything else in the matrix, but we'll see. Hopefully that etiquette will come in handy here. Welcome, sir. What business brings you to Mercy Mental Hospital? Uh, I'm here to see Holmes, Dr. Holmes. Ah, a new customer. Please wait in the common room up ahead. I'll notify the good doctor. Save. Uh, let's save here. Please stay within the cafeteria. Okay. Automated medication dispensary. It doesn't recognize you. Oh, I can't duck in here. Okay, I guess because combat hasn't started. The clock stopped, probably displaying a time from 40 years ago. What's the biz, Donnie? Hello, stranger. You look new here. Are you new here? I'm Baconator. Who are you? Name's Donnie. My name is Donnie. D-O-N-N-Y. I knew I didn't recognize you. I know everybody in this place. Everybody. Well, everybody on the first two floors. Anyone I should look out for, Donnie? No, not this floor. Only us calm ones are allowed up in the cafeteria. If you're violent, you have to eat in your room. I should go. How about you, Lorraine? Hey, guy, have you seen Josie? I don't think so. I know, right? I haven't seen him in days. Dr. Felipe told me not to worry about it. He says I worry too much. Who am I supposed to play chess with? Donnie over there can't suss more than f match four. Josie sounds like quite a guy. What does he look like? Well, he's big. He's, uh, he's got a big gold ring, and the doctors let him keep it when, uh, when he got here. Sometimes he lords it over us, but I'm sure if I had a ring like that, I would do the same. He says he won it playing for the Screamers in the Super Brawl years back. <sighs> Urban Brawl, huh? That's a rough profession. Not too rough for Josie. He says he went the whole season without any injuries. He was usually playing Outrider, though. Will you at least help me look for him? I have this key I swept off the day guard, and they keep a close eye on us. If you could have a peek in the infirmary and see if there's a record or something, he might just be in a cool-off room and they won't tell me. No sweat. Really? Really? Great. I wish everyone was as nice as you. Not like my mom. That bitch. Uh, well, sweet. What door does that actually open? Not this door. See an arm. The stench of blood and mold gets ever stronger as you move closer to the infirmary. The patient information for Josiah C. Dawson is open on the cyber terminal. 
Name, Josiah C. Dawson. Date of birth, 7-18-2015. Height, 1.9 meters. Weight, 95 kilograms. Occupation, retired. Allergies, none. Medications, alprazolam and rabexetine. Reason for stay, post-traumatic stress disorder. Status, deceased. Patient had undocumented cyberware in the left arm, as well as multiple pieces of shrapnel in various locations. Complications would likely arise if transplanted to another host. The rest of the body is in excellent condition, and can be used to improve other subjects as well as fulfill some custom requests. Let me guess, he has a ring on this hand, a big gold ring. A severed arm lies next to the zippered body bag. The arm looks human and appears neatly severed at the elbow. There's a large gold ring on the index finger. Its owner is probably the occupant of the bag. You slip the heavy ring off the cold finger and feel its weight in your hand. Inside is an engraving. It reads Screamers 2048. The surgical cart is strewn with gruesome tools, motorized saws, and metal vices. You find an unlabeled trivid disc. You have no way of playing back the disc at this time. Can I play it on the computer? No. Well, let's uh, give this ring to Lorraine, maybe? I don't know. So, so, did you see anything? Josie's not looking too good. Is he sick? Why won't they, they let me visit him? Uh, give Lorraine the ring. You mean he... Oh, God. Well, thanks for your help. The noise of a scratchy PA system blasts through the room. Attention, Baconator, please report to the nor North Hall to meet with the Administrator. They call me Baconator. The elf standing before you may quite possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, forma format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. As you approach the window, he locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Good day to you. How can I help you? Um... Okay, so all of this, we just immediately give up that uh, we know he's not Dr. Holmes. Awesome. Can't play it cool. Dr. Holmes, I presume, you're a hard man to reach, especially considering that you're dead. I'm sorry, who's dead? He acts genuinely confused, but he can't seem to drop the smile from his lips. There's a good racket you had going here, but you got sloppy with your kills. Now the Ripper's trail leads straight to your door. The only trail I see is the one that you've left in your own wake. In fact, I believe the Ripper may be standing right in front of me. Guards! Ow! Ow! Wow, that's a lot of damage. What is this? Yeah, 
we got the guard key. A medical drone. Can I really not heal my dude? Well, I guess I can use items, so it can heal me with, like, medkits. I didn't realize that's how it worked. I thought it would have, like, a healy ability. Oh wait, there's a, a terminal over here. Let's not go too far though. Wait, who's this guy? Oh my goodness. I just realized I have no AP because damn it. that robot. These are pretty weak. This is just the two.
Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Or is it? No, I guess it isn't. Check out the bathroom. They have sparky eyes. Stop. Stop getting escape and cancel an action. So that's just something we can sell. As you venture deeper into the asylum, you see the inside is every bit as bad as the outside. Gone is any attempt to uphold sanitary hospital aesthetics. With peeling paint, cracked floors, and a spo exposed conduit, the pretense of mental care is shattered. In this modern era, Mercy Mental Hospital is a throwback to the barbaric asylums of old. Prisons and torture chambers rather than places of healing. 
it's clear that Dr. Holmes is spending his money on something other than this facility. You continue on. Holmes can only run so far. Violent patient. Hospital security. Oh no, someone pulled a Nedry and opened up their cells. Okay. Let's move over here and we'll activate the straight O. Intercom begins speaking as soon as you approach. Holmes must be watching from somewhere. You don't understand, do you? This is a place for broken things. But, but only by further breaking them can they be remade. And so we must break you.
is stable. Are they gonna go hostile the moment I go in there? Doesn't say they're violent. I'm not going to just randomly attack. Okay, nothing of value in there. Oh, okay. These guys are bad. Killing hands on anymore. from us because that's honestly pretty okay. Wait, why am I... why am I hurting him? Oops. You'll have to die, sir. Oh, yeah. well, how much health do I know I have? Uh, she almost... Uh, okay. So she can heal without wasting.
three percent. Sure. Flesh is immense. The man can be reading on multiple. Okay. Is that all that's in there? Okay, we'll go back towards the gate then. Scouty drone. From another intercom, Dr. Holmes continues. Someone once told me that I was a broken thing, but he also said I could remake myself. He wanted to break me down so I could put myself back together again. And I did, but only after I broke him. <laughs> 
I could remake you as well. What wonderfully twisted thoughts must churn in a mind such as yours. But I'm more inclined to use you for parts. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Yes. Oh, I should. I always forget they have like magical abilities. Do I still have killing hands? No. Shotgun. Doctor and hospital security. Common doctor's tools.
the Trivid player holds a collection of personal diaries. Some of the video files are missing. Okay. Looks like we didn't collect all of them, I guess, but... Let's play back video one. Got some cutout chips last week. Tried them out on the patients with violent flashbacks, hoping it would at least mellow some of them out. It was like night and day. Once the chip was installed, all of their psychotic break triggers were blocked. Miss Yuskin had gone four days without attacking the staff or herself. In today's interview, Mrs. Yuskin told me she hated her legs. Said they were stumpy, unattractive. I haven't done a transplant in years, but I offered to give her new legs. Her face lit up like it was Christmas. At least her cutout can block out the surgery and painful recovery process. I've put in an order to the organ grinders to send me anything leggy. Maybe I get some elf legs in and see how she likes them. I was walking to the organ grinders downtown and there was some kind of event happening at Mega Media. They had a puppet there from Maria Mercurial's label with a Personafix chip installed, making her an exact doppelganger. They were just using her to hawk some SimSense re-release of a Mercurial live show, but it gave me an idea. The cutouts, the body modifications, and my healthy supply of patience. I'm perfectly set up to be a Bunraku fixer. If I can find a supplier for Personafix chips, I can sell full-service Bunraku, even program the behavior trees. Found a buyer for the first Bunraku. A man in the Barrens offered me 20,000 new yen for the female troll I've been modified. He likes them big, he says. All that's left is to arrange delivery. He says he can put me in touch with some more buyers if I'll accommodate special orders. These morons' lives are already over anyway. The least they could do is line my pockets. Is that abomination still in there? Oh, thank goodness. Before you is a medical lab turned torture chamber. The smell of old blood and decayed flesh permeates the room. Gory stains speak of the body's fluids spilled without regard for well-being or hygiene. There are bodies, probably former patients, trapped in hideous machines, enduring horrific experiments. The subjects you can see all appear dead. Any that aren't must wish they were. You've chased Holmes to his lair. Just as his face reveals an ugly soul, so does his safe haven, it would seem. Holmes, Silas, the Emerald City Ripper. The elf is a monster beyond compare. It's time to end this. It's weird. His first two videos actually seemed like he did care somewhat about his patients, so that's very confusing. Another intercom crackles at your elbow. One solid blow would offer a few moments of blessed silence, but this is also a rare chance to get a word in on the good doctor, who greets you with more of his chittering laughter. Mm, you're a persistent one, a fine specimen indeed. Um, how much longer are you going to hide, Doc? Hide? Nothing of the sort. I'm simply in observation. 
and what I have next in store should provide should prove most illuminating. Petizel, subdue them. Okay. Let's, let's go and haste the adept. like an AOE attack. Okay, we shouldn't be all bunched up like this. Okay. Four turns to get over there. still. This guy's a lot of health. Jeez. Spread out. really needed to heal Terra. Oh uh. Please miss. Oh. Can't you do anything right, Petizel? Okay, I have to heal her ASAP. Oh no, where's that thing that was in the middle? Okay. Confusion. Oh heck yeah. Oh well, I can't just- oh, I don't have enough APs. right now. I need someone else to heal you. Now go hide back here with the Healy robot. Stinky. Do I have acid on me?
<laughs> what? Okay, Healy Robot will go res her. Why can't I? Okay, turn your stuff off. I guess main dude will have to. I definitely brought a trauma kit. Second. Let's explore. Much to explore, let's just talk to him. Holmes drops to the ground, the light in his eyes fading fast. But something keeps the shriveled husk of his soul stuck to this mortal coil for a few moments more. This place of broken things, I remake them. She, she asked me to remake her. He manages one more laugh, his glazed eyes rolling towards a workbench across the way. She, she was playing both of us. Oh, sweet. Then with a final bloody whimper, the Emerald City Ripper breathes his last. Uh, so the chick that he replaced the legs of, is that what's going on? So I'll go look that in my, I wanna look back in here, see if we can open the store. No? Whoa. Okay, I see people. Holmes's workbench falls somewhere between Coronor's slab and medieval torture device. It's decorated in the many colors of death and littered with the instruments of that trade. To one side, there's a leather-bound journal stuffed with uneven pages. To the other is a poxek. It's a small screen. It's small screen still glowing. Beneath the bench is a rolled sheath of sheaf of papers held closed with a tied length of surgical tubing. And I realize I pronounced coroner in a strange way. Sure, let's investigate. The bench has clearly played host to numerous bodies over its lifetime. It includes limb restraints as well as skeletal traction mechanisms. At this point, Holmes likely dismembered bodies or quite possibly put them back together. The tackiness of the blood suggests it has been used relatively recently. Leafing through the pages of the journal, you find few intelligible entries. Holmes may not have been a real doctor, but his handwriting certainly fits the stereotype. Stuffed in the last few pages is a copy of a disinterment order from a local cemetery with the grave's occupant marked as Melinda Watts. Access the pocket secretary. Holmes is still logged in, granting you access to his currently loaded files. Prominent among them is a hospital report from a donor program. It lists the organs beside the names and vital statistics of the recipients. Your eye catches Sam Watts' name besides the en beside the entry for liver. It also on the list are the Ripper's other known victims, along with several others who may have shared in the same fate. There's also a large sum of Nuyen, which can easily be transferred to your account. Unfurling the large sheet of paper, you discover a diagram of the human female form, 
rendered to an impressive level of detail. It appears to be the blueprint for making Holmes' very own monster. Why would he have Melinda Watts' in disinterment order? I figured the she he was referring to was Mrs. Yaren, but maybe it's Jessica that's been playing us the whole time. Male Bunraku. <laughs> One second. What do I hear you giggling about? Your ominous laughter behind me in real life. Uh, his chip slot. His chip slot is fresh, the open wound pink and wet and lurid. His voice drips innuendo, but his eyes say nobody's home. Mm, well, hello there. Did you come to play? No thanks, I just want to know what's going on. Mm, forget him. I'll tell you anything you want. I'll do anything you want. I'll be your little playmate. By her name. She's assembled in standard config. Face of a schoolgirl, body of a stripper. You'd need some thick beer goggles to miss the work she's had done. Okay. Whoa, what's this? Personifix chip wiper. Can we help this dude? Yeah, it's the race home's. Oh. Uh, we're probably putting them into like a living hell right now. His eyes focus and his hand raises slowly to touch his head wound. The fingers come away wet and sticky. Panic twitches at the corners of his mouth as he surveys the room. First you then the girl, then down to his own body, which is no longer his. Sweet Jesus, what did he do? What am I? Oh, uh, he begins weeping uncontrollably. That's probably what that said. Maybe. Why are there little fireflies over here? on. As you approach the exit, you realize that Shannon lingers quite a few steps behind. Looking back, you see that she is half-turned, looking pensively toward the horror show of Holmes' lab. Finally feeling your eyes on her, she faces you and raises her head in a proud, almost defiant manner. We've done much good here tonight. We have removed two vile creatures from this world and so ended a growing shadow they cast upon the city. Our paths crossed and joined, and we did this thing together. But now, here, our paths must divide. Uh, you saw what I saw. This isn't over yet. No, it won't be over for some time to come. A distant cry of pain echoes down from somewhere above, and the young shaman pauses to listen to the tortured sound. There's still more work to be done for both of us, but what must be done differs for each of us. I came here to find justice for my brother, and that has been done. His spirit can now find rest, but there are other victims of the Ripper, both alive and dead, who still struggle to be at peace. Many of them are here in this place, filling the halls with their torment. I cannot leave them behind. But the spirits have something else in store for you. A different path. You must finish what you've begun. You must confront the first evil that fostered the one we've just ended. Yeah, I can respect that. Thank you. Thank you for everything. 
Because of you, my brother's killer has met swift justice, and justice of the only sort such a man as Holmes deserved, death. I will now set to the task of healing those he has left behind. For every madman we face here tonight, there are a dozen innocent souls crying out in need. The spirits of the departed will also need help in passing, or else I fear they may become like those we met in the hangar. They all deserve my help. And what about Lone Star? They can't be far behind. When they enter that room back there, they will have no thoughts other than thoughts of promotion. With a ripper in hand, my brother will be forgotten along with all the other victims. But so too will I. They will not be a problem. Whether true or not, Shannon's confidence and very presence seem capable of making it true. Good luck to you, Baconator. I hope you find the same justice for your friend that I found for my brother. Thank you, Shannon. <sighs> yeah. Let's be honest, Shannon was pretty, pretty useless anyways, so... Still not a huge fan of shamans. The ride back to the seamstress's union is quiet compared to the pandemonium left behind at Mercy Mental Hospital. The Lone Star squad cars pass you on the road, sirens blaring, no doubt in response to the aftermath of your showdown with the late Dr. Henry Holmes. Emerald City Ripper, the man who violently repossessed the internal organs of Sam and Jessica's mother, Melinda Watts, and although the killer is dead and his grip on the city is broken, it's clear he wasn't working alone. There are loose ends aching to be tied. The taxi turns onto Redmond Way, cruising past now familiar landmarks, until the seamstress's union in all its decadent seedy glory materializes between swipes of the between swipes of the its overworked windshield wipers. Time to evaluate your next move. Why are there still, like, weird typos and grammatical errors throughout this game? Seriously. It's very strange. The union is quiet this afternoon. The salarymen and wage slaves haven't migrated from nearby offices and suburbs to dabble in the exotic just yet. Johnny Clean is talking with Cherry Bomb and Mrs. Kubota when you walk up. Well, we were just talking about you, Baconator. And the Emerald City Ripper, ironic that you tracked a serial killer to a mental hospital. Johnny Clean told us you where you were going, oh my. We've been waiting for you to return. thought you knew better than that, Johnny. <laughs> well, you're right. I should have kept my mouth shut. I should have known better. It's just that we have a personal stake in the Ripper murders. <laughs> we each have our reasons for wanting the killer found. Sam was a regular here, and his loss has been felt regardless of his mm, shortcomings. The whole sprawl has been shaken by these killings as well. The randomness of them. No one knows if they will be next, or what the killer might take from them. I admit that the killings have hampered business as well. I'm sorry, but it's true. It does not help that Sam's body was found down the street from here. Even my regular customers have been loath to venture out with a killer on the loose. Now tell us, oh my, did you find the person responsible for the Ripper murders? Not exactly. I got the bastard who wielded the scalpel. Whoever's pulling the strings is still out there. Well, someone's pulling the strings of a serial killer? <laughs> Sounds more complicated than I suspected. Oh. That's why.
It is. The head of the asylum was killing specific people to harvest specific body parts. All of the transplanted organs came from the same donor, Melinda Watts, Sam's mother. It looked like he was putting her back together. So, so Sam had an organ transplanted from his mother? And then the Ripper killed Sam and all those other people? Just to reassemble Sam's mother? Yep, that's about the size of it. A higher sense of cause and effect in this. Coyote and Jake Armitage just left here to attend Sam's funeral. I'm told there will be a reinterment ceremony for his mother as well. His sister invited me to the funeral when I met her here. Well, you think his sister Jessica had something to do with it? Hang on. I saw Sam's sister when she was here the other day. She was as corp as they come, but I can't imagine a lady like that behind a series of murders. There's got to be something else going on. Well, it's clear that you must go to this funeral and talk to Jessica Watts, Baconator. I need to pay my respects to Sam. Of course. Wait, before you go, there's one thing you did not tell us, Baconator. Where is the Emerald City Ripper now? Decomposing. Hmm, <laughs> hi, that is good. Uh, no, do I want to talk to her again? No, but maybe? Oh, I found this at a data store. Oh my, this is unspeakable. Murder was not enough for this person. Selling patients as Bunraku slaves. Thank you for bringing this to me. I know you're still hot on the trail of your friend Sam's killer. I'll contact some runners to liberate these poor souls from the buyers in this list. You've done much good here today. The hand of the Ripper was more a monster than anyone could have known. No problem, good luck. To you as well. Uh, do -do -do. I guess we don't have any cell to Van Grass. Let's talk to this dude, it's been a while. Welcome back, Baconator. Hey, Mr. Clue, and I got any intel. I get the feeling you're the one carrying the intel these days. Word around here was that you were closing on the Ripper when you last left. Dare I ask how that went? He's in the ground. Where he belongs, good. And yet your shoulders are no more relaxed, and you still survey the room like a man who's yet to return from war. This isn't over, is it? My foot is very asleep right now. Holy crap. There have been some complications. Hmm. I was hoping this would soon be all behind us. The Baron's has a short memory, but for wounds such as these, it makes an exception. To see this prolonged, I fear for how it may forever change the landscape. Gangs have already started to take advantage of the chaos left in the Ripper's Wake. And that only serves to destabilize what semblance of order there was, paving the way for the megacorps to make land grabs and push poor sinless further to the fringes, where the dangers are greatest. Sooner or later, even the Union could be threatened. Good thing the Union's got you, then. Good thing we've got each other. Take care, Baconator. So I need another trauma kit, that's for sure. Welcome back, Baconator. Still all in one piece, I see. More's the pity for me, but I'll still take your money. Perhaps a full physical is in order. Or we can call it a medical consultation. 
and that's where I roughly determine the odds of your survival based on your professional proclivities. It comes with a lollipop. So what will it be? I'm curious how many patients you've lost over the years. Dr. Castle sets down her work and fixes you with a hard look. Her expression normally falls on an axis of varying degrees of indifference, depending on her level of tiredness. But now it's shifted over to something decidedly darker. Is this morbid curiosity? I call it professional curiosity. Then I suppose I should be equally professional and answer without judging you for asking. And I should not let it bias me the next time you fall under my knife. To give you a hard number is difficult, but there are many who I would have considered patients that never made it home. And so I suppose one could say they died while under my care, though not as a result of it. But the number I think you want is the number of patients who died on my table, and that number is six. Six who I was unable to save, spread across a 13-year career, and yet I remember each and every one, down to the smallest detail, including the moment where I realized I could do nothing more for them. I would argue the four of the six were beyond helping from the moment they passed through my door. The fifth died as a result of complications while installing a stolen piece of experimental cyberware, which I'd cautioned against using. And the sixth? Entirely my fault. I made a mistake. I can't claim I was overtired or inexperienced or distracted. I simply made the wrong decision, and the young man died as a result. Well, I'm sorry, Doc. Yes, well, will there be, will there be anything else? Yeah, I need med medical supplies. Give me a gold trauma kit. We have a ton of money. Let's, let's spend it. Sure, gold trauma kit. That's good enough. Let's swap out these crappy med kits for good ones. The good stuff. Cool. We don't really need cyberware. I would like to buy some more drone repair parts though. Maybe an advanced one. There we go. Uh, I don't actually see us using these things, so let's... We'll keep the grenade just because that's useful, but... Nothing right now. Do we have karma to spend? We do. We have a ton of karma. Holy cow. maybe? Sure. Oh no, that's not. How much charisma can we get? Okay. 
Okay. Maybe we do put it in the lobby then. Drums from him, right? Let's look at his drones. No class A drones. No, that stinks. Go to Watts' funeral. Alright. What is this person? No one. NERPS! I've said it every time I pass it, so... Sure, take a cab. The sun has nearly set when you reach Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. Its cemetery, dilapidated and overgrown, sits atop a small hill on the outskirts of the city, a somber enclave of the dead overlooking the sprawl of the living. The Seattle rain continues unabated and lightning appears over the mountains, exposing the landscape in staccato pulses of stark flashes. You walk the gravel path to the gates of the cemetery. Up ahead, you see Coyote and Jake standing by the gravesite alongside Jessica Watts, and another mourner, a beautiful elven woman in a six-figure outfit. Whatever Dr. Holmes was up to at Mercy Mental Hospital, the answers lie here with the reinterred body of Melinda Watts, the recently deceased body of Sam Watts, and with those attending them at this ceremony. Uh, yeah, we good. We all gravy. Let's just go ahead and talk to her. The mourners stand graveside, listening to the Catholic priest's words of prayer and solace. Jessica's face is filled with relief as the last of her family is laid to rest. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, Lord receive the souls of Sam and Melinda Watts, mother and son, to live forever by your side. Amen. Thank you, Father. I know that my mother rests easier now that she is finally in the parish cemetery. I'm sorry for the recent loss of your brother, but I'm glad that reinterring your mother's body here has brought you comfort. She loved this parish so. She opens her hands to the elf standing across from her. Thank you for coming, Lynn. Your support has meant the world to me. Now I can live again with my new family. The woman is a classic elven beauty, confident poised, expensively dressed. Of course, I'm glad this ancient ritual brings you some measure of solace. I hope you'll be able to put all of this behind you now. Thank you all for coming. I didn't realize Sam had so many friends. I appreciate your support and your friendship with Sam. I saw him the night he died. Only fitting I see him out today. Sam may have had his problems, but he was our friend, part of the Union family. May he rest in peace. Miss Watts, family members and friends, thank you for attending the service. I suggest we don't linger long. The cemetery isn't safe after dark. 
Thank you, Father. We'll just be a moment. Not so fast, sister. I need some answers out of you. Her eyes widen at the edge in your voice. I'm sure Father O'Malley doesn't appreciate such a tone on these grounds. Father, if you'll excuse us. Of course, I'll be just inside if you need me. The priest gives you an appraising look before moving off toward the nearby church. Why'd Lynn come over here too? Father O'Malley leaves, granting you an opportunity to speak with Jessica, but it's hardly a private conversation, as the elf Lynn has chosen to stay and support her friend. As it so happens, Jake and Coyote have also lingered, lending you support too. Alright, what would you like to talk about, Baconator? Let's talk a little more about Sam. Do you know he had a liver transplant? Jessica seems to choose her words carefully due to the circumstances, or the company. No, but it doesn't surprise me he needed a new liver, considering his lifestyle. So you've no idea where Sam's transferred liver came from? No, how could I? Well, it's a matter of record, obtainable by anyone wanting it bad enough, donor and recipients. And why would I care about such things? Those recipients served as a checklist for the Ripper, a man named Holmes. Ever heard of him? I can't say I have. Funny, because when he died, he said she played us both. Who do you figure he meant? Certainly not my mother. But she was the common link, wasn't she? She was the organ donor to all his victims. My mother was not a donor. She was as much a victim as anyone. Those organs saved lives, including Sam's life. Holmes killed everyone your mother saved. Those people were scavengers, ghouls. They deserved to die for desecrating my mother's body. And poor Sam. It was his drinking and debauchery that drove my mother to the grave, as sure as if he'd murdered her himself. My mother deserved honor and dignity. I gave her that today. She's finally whole again with a proper Catholic burial. Those ghouls who stole her organs, including Sam, have paid the price for their sins. <clears throat> Jessica, that's enough. We've business to attend to. My old family's dead and buried where they should be. They can't taint my new family now. They can't corrupt my children. I won't go through that again. Jessica, we need to go now. She presses a button on her comlink. What happens now is on your head. If you'd just walked away when I told you to, McCluskey would have eventually found Holmes, collected his lieutenant's badge, and closed the case. But you... You had to keep digging. Now you and your friends have to die. Let the let their blood be on your hands. Ma'am, we received your code red. Only three? No problem. Baconator should go hide. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, I've been actually a key, I forgot. I don't think I'll be doing a decking, I've just really brought a gun. Uh, 
Uh, this has no cover at all from these fellows, but... Maybe I just have a pistol. Uh, he's just a tourist. And that's how Baconator likes to dress. Uh, two hired guns right next to me. Now I'm missing them from point blank range. Baconator's pretty worthless out here, though. Team B, move it. That's a lot of enemies. We need to find out where Sam's sister might have gone. Maybe one of these guys can tell us with a little encouragement. Holy cow. Okay, let's uh, we'll hole up, I think, around this end. I'm sure there are enemies coming from over there, too. Everyone's missing this person. Hide over here. coming from a crypt? Oh, no. Really? Can we have the undead fight these guys? Have them just fight each other? What is this? It summons a Force 4 Abomination Elemental. Sensor stash. We aren't able to use that. Uh, 
that Jake might need some help, let's see. Like they're probably gonna be fighting the undead, so. Yeah, let's just hold up on this side. Let them all fight each other. Looks like we woke up the neighbors. We've got ghouls incoming. Hey, Baconator, maybe we can use this to our advantage. <laughs> really? Oh, hell, ghouls! Die Baconator. I had to try. So much for using the ghouls to our advantage. We're just going to fight them now. And we killed the enemy too quickly. Ow. Heal self, please. Accuracy is so trash. Robot. It's a drone. Okay, so if we get hit by these guys, they infect us. That's awesome. Uh, Baconator, um, go hide. Thank you. 
Oh, this guy's still alive. He's the one we're going to question. Sit tight. Wait for more uh, enemies, I guess. Talk to that guy, but let's explore first, see if there's some more items to loot. You know me, I love looting graves. Listen as the sounds of gunfire and spell bursts fade away, and the silence of the dead returns to the cemetery. This man is beyond healing. As you look down at him, you notice the quality of his suit and, sho and shoes. This isn't a runner, and he's not from the street. Jessica Watts, she hired you. Where can I find her? You lose! You get nothing! He convulses and dies. Okay. We don't know each other too well, but it seems to me that you need to find a better group of people to associate with. Where'd those guys come from? You didn't recognize who the elf was? Oh, Lynn. We have heard her. She's, uh, we heard people talking about her at that weird cult place. I guess that's the new family. No, who was she? She's Lynn Telestrian, super rich and super into the Universal Brotherhood. She's a major spokesperson for them in Seattle. Hmm, Jake grabs the dead man by the throat. At first it looks like he's trying to kill him all over again. And then you notice he's feeling for something under the skin. Yup, he's got a Corp ID chip. You watch as Jake pulls out his modified PDA and slots the chip. Mr. 
Wily here was with Eagle Security. They work for the Universal Brotherhood. That must have been Lynn Telestrian's security detail we just chewed through. If she is protecting Jessica, they'll be inside the Universal Brotherhood. Uh, it's being spooky? Being spooky is not a crime. Not being spooky might be a crime, especially in a cemetery. If you're going to hit up the Universal Brotherhood, I'm coming too. That psycho just admitted she had my friend Sam and a lot of innocent people killed so she could put her dead mother back together. That's totally slagged up. Plus, she and her elf buddy Lynn just tried to geek me. They're gonna hurt for that. Suit yourself, lady. I was only stopping by to pay my respects to Sam. Merc hit squads, the Universal Brotherhood, not my scene at the moment. I can call up some of Delilah's runners if you want to go there now. Let me decide, or let me know what you decide. Uh, can I shop first, maybe? That'd be grand. Brotherhood probably retains mercs like the ones that just attacked us for their security detail. You're gonna need a full team if you're heading to their chapter house. I can arrange for some of Delilah's runners to meet you there if you want to go now. Um. Yeah, let's go back to Union. How do I do that? How do I leave? I want to leave. Oh, up here. And I think I will save and call it a day right here. Although it feels like I'm very close, so next Saturday will probably be a short uh, session of this. Now, once I get back to Union, I'm going to save. And, um, get off for the day. Have to prep for a, a weird Pathfinder session that we're doing today, and uh, go get some sun to eat, some stinky and chewy. Save. Uh, yeah, yes, it will be. I think maybe a little bit weirder than usual. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but we'll see. A little later. Peace out. Thank you for chilling with me. I had fun. Really loving this game. Um, I liked it the first time I played it. I'm liking it even more now, so... Can't wait to play through um, Dragonfall and Hong Kong. I haven't even finished Hong Kong ever before, so...